Now let's consider an interesting scenario related to rationality. And it's related to something that we sometimes term as fallibilism. That is, that rationality is fallible. And you'll understand what, we're, what we mean by that in a second. Now right over there, you see a picture of Harry Truman, former President of the United States, holding up a, uh, a copy of the Chicago Daily Tribute saying, Dewey defeats Truman with a big smile on his face. Now the story behind this picture is that the presidential race between Truman and Dewey was extremely close and when everybody went to bed the night after the election remember this was before the days where everything was tallied electronically so they weren't quite sure how it was going it looked like Dewey had won the election and in fact it looked so strongly that the editors of the Chicago Daily Tribune ran the headline Dewey defeats Truman well that's why Harry Truman is smiling, President Truman is smiling the way he did because he finds it very amusing because he in fact they, they discovered the next day that he in fact won the election contrary to that. But that brings up an interesting example. You know, and suppose we have a resident of Chicago misled so suppose misled was a Chicago resident who got the newspaper in the morning after the election and consider the following proposition 22 Dewey won the election Truman won the election consider those two propositions uh, we also know only one of the two of them could be true right what is reasonable for misled to believe? And keep in mind, don't start second guessing. This is the Chicago Daily Tribune. It's not the National Enquirer or the Star. This was a very reputable Chicago newspaper. So what is it reasonable for misled to believe? She wakes up the morning after the election. Most people would say it's reasonable for her to believe that Dewey won the election. She's read many stories in the Chicago Tr Daily Tribune. She's had confirming evidence that what she's read there is correct, especially a story of the significance of a presidential election. It makes perfect sense that it would be reasonable for her to believe that Dewey won the election. However, that's not what happened, was it? And it suggests that something that we might call fallibilism is true. What does fallibilism claim? That a belief can be reasonable or rational even though it's false. Notice in our case of misled. Misled is perfectly ras rational and reasonable in believing something is false, that Dewey won the election. Similarly, if you, if you hold a, this fallibilistic position, that is, rationality is fallible, a belief can be completely unreasonable or irrational even though it is true. That is, all the evidence could point away from a true proposition. Think in the course of medical research. Sometimes people are led off track. Or in the course of a detective investigation, people are led off track by, because they're following the evidence. And it's only reasonable for them to follow the evidence because that's where the trail is. Remember what we were talking about, the weight of the evidence and rationality and reasonability. So the point is that evidence is, that rationality based on evidence is fallible. Now sometimes you have conclusive evidence. 
And by conclusive evidence, we mean evidence that guarantees the truth of the thing that it serves as evidence for. So conclusive evidence, in contrast, is such strong evidence that it can never lead to a false belief. But think about it. Do you have conclusive evidence for most of your beliefs? Do you have evidence that guarantees the truth of most of your beliefs? How about Kingsborough is located on the bay? Do you have conclusive? I mean, look, we have really good evidence, right? You know, we walk out the door, we're at Sheepshead Bay. So the Kingsborough campus is located. But this could be a clever ruse. It could be a clever trick. This could be a mission impossible scheme that they're making us all believe that the Sheepshead Bay is there when it isn't. You know, there was the movie The Truman Story, oh, this is a bad pun, because, where Jim Carrey was brought up believing that this whole fictional world was true when they were taking pictures of him, and it in fact was contrived, it was set up for his. So we don't have, for most of our beliefs, we do not have conclusive evidence. It's for, perhaps for certain of our beliefs, we do have conclusive evidence. Things like 2 plus 2 equals 4. We have conclusive evidence for that. That is, we don't have to go out and count up pairs of, you know, pairs of pairs and keep counting them up to make sure that they're all equal to 4 to know that 2 plus 2 is 4. Rather, mathematics is the kind of thing that we can have conclusive evidence about. But if we think about it, most of what we are reasonable believing and most of what we know and are rational in believing is based on less than conclusive evidence. Maybe you'll call it probable evidence or something like that. But fallibilism is not a problem. It is a fact of life. It doesn't mean that we're not reasonable to in believing things. It just means that sometimes, even though we follow our reasonable beliefs, when we're following our reasonable beliefs, we end up in the wrong place. So it seems to be an absolutely too true doctrine that is conclusive evidence guarantees the truth, rationality gets us towards the truth, but doesn't always take us there. It doesn't guarantee on every occasion that we make it there. So fallibilism is true. Nonetheless, we should still be rational and follow the reasonable thing to do, even though it doesn't get us there 100% of the time. And perhaps fallibilism is a reason that we should be tolerant of other people's beliefs, because regardless of how reasonable we are in believing what we believe, we're fallible. There's always a possibility that our evidence has led us in the wrong direction.